biometric authentication complete. Please state your business. Acknowledged. Reinitializing Circus Tower Systems. Searching for Elidibus Entity. Target located in Subterranean Core Power Accumulator. Projecting image. My home. My friends. No more than a dream. Oh. Oh. You. Why have you awakened me? I no longer sense those places beyond. Or Lord Zodiac. You must explain all. So, he has fallen, and my brethren's souls returned to the star. The doom we sacrificed so much to prevent is come again. Old burdens now yours to bear. But if this is Van Daniel's design, then I, as Elidibus, have a duty to fulfill. Your unsolicited act has restored to me some few memories of the Convocation. Such knowledge as I have, I will share. Why apologize for receiving a favor of the defeated? If it sits ill, Consider it payment for freeing Lord Zodiac from servitude. Where to begin? Ah, the end. Your understanding of what caused the final days is consistent with our own. The decay first took root where the currents were weakest. Yes. A conclusion drawn by him, Van Daniel. Not the him of here and now, but as I knew him, long, long ago. Having shed light upon the phenomenon, he dedicated himself to devising a countermeasure. Were it not for his knowledge of the Celestial, we would never have made the connection, and thence forestalled the final days. And though he inherited that noble soul, how different this last incarnation, so consumed by self-loathing and hate. Alpis. Yes. The name is familiar to me, yet I know it not as a flower, but a place. A testing facility for determining which of our creations were fit to be released into the world. Many worked there, and before joining the Convocation and assuming the title of Van Daniel, he was their chief. He was Hermes. That is all I know. The crystals tell little of the lives the Fourteen led prior to their induction. 
Alpis itself would tell even less. Nary a ruin has survived. Wait. I saw you there. In Alpus. No. I did not. But I did. I did. A lingering trace of impossibility. And a truth that fills my heart. My memories remain clouded, I fear. However, they have revealed to me one possible course. You must travel to Elpis, to the time when Hermes served as its chief. In glimpsing the Exarch's memories, not only did I make his summoning magic mine own, I also mastered the workings of this tower which, having absorbed my empowered essence, now harbors an abundance of energy. As such, I believe I can deliver you unto the past, unto that place and that precise moment. Given the eons that must be traversed, the gateway will not be fully formed. Your form will be less tangible still than those warriors of light I had summoned. In all likelihood, none will be able to see or hear you. Yet even should you manage to interact with others, you will be unable to affect meaningful change. For the reality you wish to save, the reality to which you must return, exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. Cannot unmake the sorrow and suffering fated to come. In full knowledge of this, will you still entrust your life to your foe and make the journey? Very well. I shall cast you unto the river of time. Let this be my final act. You must input the commands. I no longer have the authority. First, you must reconfigure the systems, that the tower's ether may be channeled for the magic. Preparations are complete. The gateway will soon open. Return at once to the ocular. All appears to be in order. The ether flows unimpeded. The magic should consume every last moat of my essence. Why are you surprised? Did I not say that this will be my final act? Lord Zodiac is no more. There is nothing for me here. The ones I love and long to see again are waiting in that promised land beyond memory. And dream. Now go, warrior of light. Go and do not look back.
Well, Heidelin, I take my leave of you. Yours is the mantle of the last man. May you have the joy of it, the burden and the solitude. It falls to you now, you and your champion, to save our star. And here we are, Elpis. Well, well, how rare to receive you in person. To what do we owe the honor? Oh, just a few odd tasks. We'll be here a while. You're welcome to stay as long as you see fit, of course. As a matter of procedure, however, I must ask that you kindly remove your masks. Come now, is this truly necessary? Surely you can tell who we are. Who you are, perhaps, but I am far less infamous. Regardless, if we do not follow protocol, it is our hosts who would be held accountable. So, please, do favour us with your handsome face. Satisfied? I thank you for your cooperation. You are free to go about your business. By the by, you see it too, yes? I haven't the foggiest what you're talking about. Hmm, that's odd. It's right here. 
bit thin in the ether, but there's no mistaking it. The colour of its soul is almost identical to Azem's. Do you suppose he created it? Rather unusual for a familiar to have a soul, though. Don't ask me. All I know is that it's trouble. Doubly so if it's his spitting image. So let's leave it be. Come now. Hmm. It's trying to say something. But it's literally too intangible to form words. Why don't you give it some ether? Spare a snifter of your bounteous reserves. Who do you take me for? Why, a dear friend, of course. One who wouldn't let acts of kindness, such as my accompanying him on errands to far-flung outposts, go unrewarded. I suggest you close your eyes, or this may be unpleasant. You may open your eyes. adjusted its size. The better to indulge your whim. This way, it will be easier to communicate. How very thoughtful of you. And may I applaud your artful reinforcement. Without further ado then. Greetings. I am Hithlidaeus, Chief of the Bureau of the Architect. Sulking beside me is the most honourable Emmett Selk of the Convocation of Fourteen. And how might we address you, my new friend? A fine name. And I'm pleased to see you understand our words. So, tell us, whence have you come? The thinness of your essence suggests you weren't created here. You do not know? Or cannot say? Hmm. Allow me to ask a different question then. What brings you here? Well now, the same as us. Perhaps Azim wished to come too, but had to settle for a familiar. If he truly wished to be here, then he would be. Right you are. My apologies if we've given offence. The two of us can discern the colour of souls, you see and yours happens to resemble that of a friend. And with your purpose matching our own besides, we jumped to a hasty conclusion. We are here to speak with Hermes, the chief overseer of this facility, which we also intend to tour in order to gain greater insight into the man's work. 
we, I say, though this is Emmett Selk's charge. I am here only to serve as his guide. And I should be happy to serve as yours as well, by way of an apology for the misunderstanding. Wait, are you suggesting that we bring it along on official business? This thing we know next to nothing about? If you harbour suspicions, better to keep it close than leave it to its own devices. Wouldn't you agree? Besides, having a mysterious life form in tow is the norm rather than the exception here. Welcome, my friends, to the testing ground of creation at Heaven's Edge, Elpis. Can you hear me? Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. I wish only to hear your words, share your feelings, and know your thoughts. May we please be friends? <laughs> May we please be friends? Ah, I see you found him. Hithlidaeus, it's been a while. Too long, I think. Too long indeed for close collaborators. On this blessed occasion, I bring not only myself, but others who long to speak with you. of the convocation. Emmett Selk at your service. Do I have the honor of addressing Hermes, chief overseer of Elpis? You do. You have traveled far for it. Given your facility's purpose, its remote location is something of a necessity. Would that I didn't have to rely upon a guide. Oh, you wound me. 
Have I not ever been an attentive and helpful friend? But moving along to more agreeable company, this one we chance to... Well, you certainly have her attention. Is she one of yours, Hermes? Her name is Meteon. It means shooting star. Hmm. If I may make an observation, her ether is terribly thin. I fear she might dissipate at any moment. Nor do I believe you've made a submission to the Bureau. I would remember such a concept if you had. I haven't, as you say. I judged it too early. She's a pet project of mine, still undergoing preliminary testing. But rest assured that I will attend in person ere long. Very well. Being an authority on flying life forms, I appreciate that you are exacting in your work. I shall look forward to your submission. If we have finished with the perfunctory chit-chat, I would discuss official matters. By my coming, I trust you already anticipate the subject. I have an inkling, yes. Please wait to the main building yonder. I shall join you as soon as I've returned these creatures to their homes. The stoma is missing. Hmm. I may have found it. A creature with the self-same ether as those there, nestled in the boughs of a tree outside the grounds. You're saying they can climb with their sorry excuses for limbs? The fashion has been to imbue aquatic creatures with the power of flight, ever since the words of Mitron created a sky-swimming fish. The Ambistomas, too, can fly, if only slightly, and they could conceivably climb a tree. Whether they can come down safely, however... Excuse me. supposed to do with this lot? <laughs> May I suggest we split up? If you would be so good as to assist Hermes, Emmett Selk and I shall keep an eye on these adorable creations in the meantime. This appears to be the place. And here is where we part ways. We will be discussing highly sensitive affairs. Only a select few may be privy to such knowledge, and that does not include someone who cannot or will not divulge their origins. Will I have to remove you by force? Yes, 
I'm sure your business with Hermes is quite pressing. You may speak with him to your heart's content after ours is concluded. I do not object to his attendance. Hermes, this is highly irregular. Perhaps, but I believe he can be trusted. Meteon would not have taken to him so quickly otherwise. Moreover, the presence of a third party may help me to maintain composure. <sighs> As you wish, then. Behave yourself, do you hear? So, it's finally happened, then. I, Van Daniels declared his intention to step down and named you as his preferred successor. In recognition of your knowledge and your works, the Convocation is giving the recommendation due consideration. As one who does not know you personally, I am to use my impartial eye to take your measure. And above all else, to ascertain your disposition towards the invitation. I understand that you and Van Daniel are close. He himself was once chief overseer of Elpis after all. I should not be surprised if you knew before anyone else that he wished to relinquish his office. I did. He told me that when he fulfilled his purpose, he wished to pass the torch to me. A torch you seem none too pleased to accept. Are you so averse to serving on the convocation? No, it's not that. For a humble researcher like myself to even be considered is an honor beyond words. No. What troubles me, what I struggle to come to terms with, is the very fact that Van Daniel is stepping down. Does this not mean that he will return to the star? Of his own volition, yes like so many others have before him. Return to the star? Does that mean... die? Well now, that's not a word I hear often. Is that what you say here in Elpis? Mankind is the life of a Theris. Each of us a drop of blood flowing through its veins, bearing sustenance. In our finite time upon it, tis our duty to make it a better place, that all who call it home, now and in future, may abide in happiness. To that end, we have dedicated ourselves to the pursuit of enlightened creation, and by our efforts did we transform this once untamed wilderness into the peaceful paradise you enjoy today. To return to the star whence we came is a privilege afforded to we who have so loved and nurtured it. A choice embraced by those who have lived their lives to the fullest, in service to our world. And when they depart upon this journey, it is beautiful, always. The Fourteen are no exception. Tis believed no occasion is more felicitous than the fulfillment of one's duty. Our office becomes our lives, and to retire is to return, or so the majority of us hold. Some few have elected to eschew custom.
Mayhap you feel Fan Daniel's deeds do not warrant his return. Yet you should know his accomplishments as well as any. During his time, he conceived of countless outstanding concepts. And channeling the wealth of experience he attained here in Elpis, he brought forth many new specimens. I know of all this. I do. It's just... I cannot fathom why someone so great and wise, who could still do so much good, would want to end it all. Forgive me. I know I requested your presence. Might I trouble you to take Meteon outside? A change of scenery would do her good. Amazing! Is it not? The Ampelos, one of our newest subjects. So, how are we coming along? Product of Elpis, and so named for their birthplace. A happy accident, born of the hands of a former researcher who loved beautiful blossoms. Unique for how they change color, to reflect the emotional state of those nearby. Though be it here or elsewhere, they are seldom seen in any hue save purest white. Reflect the emotional state, you say? By what means do they achieve this? In creation, there exists an energy wholly apart from ether, one driven by emotions. In like manner to how we manipulate ether, this flower is subject to the influence of said energy. Well, it has no will of its own, it is sensitive to the prevailing emotion in the vicinity and reacts by altering its color and vibrancy. Akasha? Akasha? It is one of the unseen energies defined by Hanish alchemical theory. Though a gross oversimplification, some describe it as an essence influenced by feelings. Though I'm not familiar with the term, your description suggests it is the self-same energy. Dynamis, we call it. And those entities like the Elpis flower, that have the ability to interact with this energy, converting emotions into tangible phenomena, are Antelekis. Oh, my dear, and no ordinary one at that, but the first, possessed of free will. Wait, 
A form of energy other than ether? Dynamis? I've never heard of such a thing. Hardly surprising. Dynamis cannot be seen, much less felt. And though its existence has long been theorized, we had no proof until the flower's serendipitous creation. What's more, Dynamis is far weaker than ether. Under normal circumstances, its effects are drowned out by the latter. On account of which, beings comprised of and reliant upon the ether, like you and I, are unable to make practical use of Dynamis. Tis a truly esoteric thing, known to but a select few scholars. Intriguing. Then, given the limitations you described, why create Meteon? Our star, Etheris, is especially rich in ether, so much so that its name is derived from it. However, when we consider all energy in existence here and in the vast space beyond, Dynamis may account for as much as 68.3%. The more abundant form by far. Were we able to control it? we could open the door to limitless possibilities. Tis not unlike a gently flowing stream, unable to break through the dam of ether barring its path. But if we could imbue the stream with the vigor of a raging river... Ah... Not that I have such grand ambitions. Nay, I merely wish to create a being that could traverse the great expanse. The relative scarcity of ether beyond the bounds of this star was a concern. And so, I looked to another source of energy by necessity. That being Dynamis. No wonder her ether is so thin. Precisely. Yours is thin too. Like an entelechy. Like me. So... Are we the same? Entelechies.
That sounds more akin to the desperate flailings of a wild beast when facing imminent death. A deficit of ether alone does not an Antelaki make. It would, however, make it easier for you to interact with Dynamis. And limited though its influence may be, this quality could prove the difference between victory and defeat. You do well not to underestimate it. Oh dear. I'd forgotten about the poor fellow. You must excuse me a moment while I go and verify a few more things. No, no, no. You are not foisting this nonsense on me. I'm given to understand you have the power to help the Charybdis, and should be quite willing to do so. And so I appeal to your better nature, most benevolent Emmet Selk. Please teach her to fly. Or else Hermes will transform! Right now! Now, now, there's no need to go quite that far. Altruism is its own reward, as I'm sure he would agree. Oh, would he now? And who contrived to put me in this position, pray tell? Nothing so devious. I merely suggested a possible course of action. made to your creations. I thank you to remember this favour and let it be the last. I will aid it once it is taken to the air. It falls to you to shepherd it skyward. Well, let's relax and enjoy the spectacle, shall we? You were wondering why Emmett Selk joined the Convocation. Truth be told, he wasn't the first choice for the office. I was. On the strength of my ability to see Ether. But I declined the offer. For though my vision is exceptional, I am pedestrian in all other aspects. Worse even. Quite abysmal when it comes to manipulating Ether, for example. Couldn't transform even if I had a mind to do so. What good is the ability to perceive a problem if one cannot act to address it? Emmett Selk has no such shortcomings. He excels in vision and manipulation both, the latter to an extraordinary degree. If there is a mage more powerful, I do not know of them. Thus did I recommend him for the office in my stead. And I wasn't the only one. Far from it. Countless others vouched for his skill and character. People the world over, to whom he had previously lent a helping hand. <laughs> oh, how surprised he was. Claimed he hadn't done anything remarkable for anyone. Modest to a fault. He deserved every bit of acclaim he received. 
yet he may well have gone unappreciated were it not for a mutual friend. A singular soul who can't help but involve himself in the business of others. Where he walks, excitement is certain to follow. His antics irritate Emmett Selk to no end, but much of his grumbling stems from genuine concern. When our friend calls, he never fails to answer and lend his talents. And in the course of doing so, he himself came to be recognized and respected by those around him. <laughs> they are truly remarkable individuals, and I'm proud to call them friends. To help them realize their dreams. This will be my greatest contribution to our world. And when they have fulfilled their respective purposes, so too shall I have fulfilled mine, and together we may return to the star. Look at me, spilling my innermost secrets. I can't seem to help it with you. I can only assume it is due to the color of your soul. I just don't understand how you can be so alike and yet so different. Ah, yes. I dare say the Charybdis will be fine here on. Why don't you go and signal to Emmett Selk? Let him know that his arduous task is at an end. <laughs> <laughs> 